Welcome to another Hoosier BI video in the Query Stuff series. In this one, we're going to talk about random number generation in Power BI, Power Query. Um, random numbers are, are real handy when you're trying to obviously generate a bunch of numbers real quickly. Um, and when you're, for example, modeling stuff or you're trying to do uh, generate training material or demo material, uh, if you want to check the performance of something, for example. Um, and so there's two main functions uh, that are used to generate random numbers. One is number.random, the other one is list.random. And I'm going to show you in this uh, video why I recommend you use list.random. It gives you a little bit more uh, control and consistency in generating random numbers. And then um, also show you an important tip to know if you do decide to use list.random and generate uh, lots of random numbers, uh, to make sure you use list.buffer to not uh, really hurt your performance. Um, if you like uh, these videos, I have a bunch more planned uh, for Power BI, uh, both in the query series um, and more stuff on DAX and visuals, uh, for example. Uh, please uh, follow me on Twitter, uh, at MahoneyPA, or subscribe to the Hoosier BI uh, channel on YouTube. So let's head over to the query editor and start talking about random numbers. Um, I've got some pre-made queries already that I'll show in a minute, uh, but I was just going to start out with a blank query and just start talking about these functions real fast. So if I just do number.random, it doesn't require any input uh, parameters. I'll get a random number between 0 and 1. And if I sit here and refresh preview, I'll get a different random number, and that works, that works well. Um, but where the issue comes in with number.random is say let's make a quick table of data and I'll just generate a list from A to Z and then I'll turn that into a table so that I can add a column to it and if I just do this and now in my um, I'll just make a random number column and I'll add that that seems to work well, and if I sit here and refresh, I get different random numbers, and, it, and importantly, I get a different number on each row. And, and typically, you would take this random number and, for example, multiply by 100 and round it to get you know integers from 1 to 100, for example. Um, where the trouble comes in is people get going on number.random, and then they do some other step in their query. So I'm going to do a transform step, and I'm just going to add a suffix to my column one value here. I'm just going to put a one on the end of each one. And what you'll see is um, all the numbers turn into the same value. And so Power Query is always doing its own kind of optimizations. And this is a feature mostly, but in this case, it turns into a bug um, where it, it looks at your whole query and says, hey, I, I, you've asked for a random number on each row. And I'm going to go ahead and do that once up front instead of doing it on every row. And as a result, you get the same number. Um, there is a workaround for this that if you go prior to that step there and add in a index column, I'll just do it from zero and insert that step. This is a good workaround to make it so that even after you do that step and I sit here and refresh previews now, that's a workaround to make sure you still get a different number on each row. And that may work well for you. Um, uh, it almost always works for me. I've had a couple times where, where it hasn't. Um, maybe I did something wrong. Um, but I like to use um, list.random when I'm doing random numbers because I, there's an extra dimension of control that you get uh, that you don't with number.random. Um, and so um, if I go back and change this to instead of number.random, I go to list.random, and with list.random, you have to provide a value of how many uh, numbers in the list to generate. And with this table has 26 rows. Uh, we'll talk about making calculating that dynamically uh, in a minute. Um, but if I just do list.random, I'll get a a list of numbers. If I preview those below, um, and I'll get a a different list on every row there. And hopefully you know this trick that if you want to extract a value from a list, you can just reference the index of it in curly brackets. So uh, counting in Power Query starts with zero. So if I want the first element, I would put a, a zero there in curly brackets. 
and it would take the first number uh, out of that list. Okay, um, and then if we go though, and if we have the the index column here, um, then we still get a, a good result here where we have a different number on each row. And if I refresh, okay, so that's all well and good. And um, but this would still suffer. Say I get rid of this index column. Um, this approach still does suffer from the same issue I described before where it tries to optimize and whatever. Um, and so let's talk about how to uh, get around that. Uh, it turns out with the uh, list.random, there's a second term that's optional and you can actually provide um, the seed value. And so if I put, say that, and you can put any integer here, positive or negative, and I've tried this out to a billion, um, the list.random, um, it's a it's a pseudo random number generator and you can provide a seed value which is the starting value and then after that it has an algorithm to generate random numbers from that point. Um, and so if you give it a, a seed value, every time you refresh you'll actually get the, the same list uh, of random numbers um, each time. And so in this case, because on every row I've said I want the uh, list of the first element of a list of 26 random numbers starting with a seed of one I get the same number on on each row um, and so the tricks you can do to get a different number is either you can um, like we had before you can add an index column and so let's add that index column back uh, starting from zero the two ways to make sure you get a different number on each row are to use your index number in the formula. And there's two ways you can do it. One is you can use your index value here as the seed value. And because of their integers, that's, this will work. And so now I actually get a different number because I'm actually generating a different list of 26 numbers on each row and I'm just grabbing the first value from it. And so because the different lists are different, they have different starting values, I get a different number um, on each row. So that's one way to do it um, to consistently get that. Um, the other way is to, for example, use a constant value and then use your index value to pull a different number from the list. So in this case, I'm generating the same list of um, 26 numbers, but then I'm pulling out a different number uh, from that list. And so I end up getting a different number. And the nice thing about this approach is when I refresh, um, I get the same numbers every time, but a different number on each row. And I like to use this approach because say I'm generating training material and I want to um, have uh, people follow along and they maybe need to refresh the data instead of getting a whole bunch of new numbers they actually would get the same numbers every time they refresh and those numbers would match mine so that if we write a DAX expression for example the numbers would calculate to be the same um, even though I've gotten the benefit of generating a whole bunch of, of different numbers uh, using this approach so this is definitely the one I the one I recommend um, I've kind of got all these different approaches uh, summarized here we're not going to need this anymore so I'm going to delete that um, I've, I've made this source data table here because um, I have one more point I want to show and that's on performance and using the function list.buffer. But before I talk about that, um, all three of these queries use this same table as an input so that if I make this table much bigger, um, they're all still pointing to the table and I can check performance. But this one basically you know, uses that as the input and I've shown all the all the things I've kind of talked about the variations on the theme where you know if I use no seed right I'll, I'll get a different list on each row um, but if I pull out um, the same uh, constant index putting that here I can end up with the same values on each row um, if I use a a constant seed I'll actually get um, the and the same list every single time. So if you look at the first values, they're not changing because I'm using the same seed on every row. Um, and note here, I'm using the the row count of the previous step, the source step, to say how many uh, numbers to have in this list of random numbers. Um, uh, and then if I extract the you know the first value out of that thing with a constant seed, 
not surprisingly, I'd get the same uh, value here. And so if I if I sit here and refresh, those will always be the same. But notice this one here without a seed is is always changing. So again, neither of these is probably the ones you want to use. Um, these ones here are, are probably either this one or this one, where you would have a a constant seed and then take out the the variable, uh, take out a different number from the list using the index column uh, value um, in inside the curly brackets to pull it out. And this is the one I, I typically use and recommend. You can do go the other way where you actually generate different lists by putting the using the index here and then taking the first value. You can take any value out, but I just it's simplest just to use the first um, out of that. Um, and again, you notice if you refresh these, right, you'll get the same numbers back in, in every row again, which is useful uh, when you're doing training. Um, and of course, the last one here is you know you can use no seed so that you know you get that randomly generated random list. I think it uses like something from the system clock or something every time you refresh, and it uses like the seconds or something from that for the seed or something like that. And so now if I refresh, if you truly do want different numbers every time, but you want different numbers in each row, then you can take out the seed and just use your index uh, value here to, to get a different number there. So again, you've got lots of flexibility here and control of, do I want the same numbers every time, um, like one of these two options, or do I truly want random numbers and I want new random numbers every time I, I refresh? All right, so you've got options there. So the other reason I recommend using this one here where you have the have a constant seed um, so you're generating the same list every time but then just extracting a different value of this is when it comes to performance and this one allows you to use the uh, list.buffer feature um, and hopefully you're familiar with list.buffer and table.buffer um, where they'll actually let you store a table or in this case a list in memory so um, it it is much more performant because if you're referencing or using that table or less many times throughout your query, having it stored in memory makes it much, much faster. Um, and so that actually does have an impact here. And so I set up these two queries here to demonstrate the, the power of list.buffer when generating random numbers. Okay. Um, so I said all these are using the same source data table. And I did this one so that I could um, quickly change the size of it and I changed this a little while ago and so previously it was one and now I've got it at 300 so I'm making the table 300 times bigger 300 times more rows than it had before so 300 times 26 I actually started with it I did a test with this earlier much higher and the performance is huge so I actually had to scale it back quite a bit just to show um, this so that they both both queries would refresh in the, in the time uh, of this video. Um, so if I just start with the not buffered one, which is similar to uh, examples I just showed you. So again, it's using this source data thing now with uh, many more rows over a thousand. Um, and we come in with this kind of a formula where in this case, I'm doing some more math as well. And this is typically how would you, you would use this is I generate my random number and then I, for example, multiply by 100 and, and round that. I like to round up so that my the frequency of getting zeros and hundreds is not half of all the other numbers. If I use round up, then I don't get any zeros um, and I get as many 100s as I get 99s. Um, but in this case, I'm using a, a constant seed value. So I'm generating the same random list every time and then I'm grabbing a different value out of that list using the value from the index column, uh, again, starting with zero. Um, and so this is like we showed before, and so then how we would apply list.buffer, so is instead of it um, calculating that, uh, making that random list for every single row, in this case, well over a thousand times, um, in, in the buffered example, uh, I have an extra step here. And so again, I have the same source data and then I can insert this step here. And in this case, I'm gonna make this list one time. So I'm gonna use the list.buffer function to wrap around this. And then inside that I have my, generate my random number list. So again, I'm still uh, referencing the number of rows in the in the source data. This should have been just the source step, uh, but it's it's the same thing. 
um, and then I give my constant seed value. And again, any integer would work here, positive or negative. Um, and so then I just add my custom again. But in this case, I'm referencing that previous step, the random buffered step. And I'm, all I'm doing is instead of generating the list here, I'm just extracting a value from that buffered list already. Okay. And it turns out this makes it much, much faster. So now if I hit close and apply, you'll see the difference. And what you're going to see are three queries refreshing. You're going to see the source data uh, query refresh. So you'll see how long it takes that to generate the, the rows, the 300 times 26 uh, rows there. Um, and then you'll see a comparison of speed between these two. And what you're going to see is that the buffered is, is much, much faster. So if we do that, see those three come up. And you'll see that the source data and buffered are, are almost the same time, 7,800 rows. And you'll see this one is much slower. So you could see that if you had, you know, millions of rows, for example, if you were generating something like that, the performance is, is remarkable. So I definitely recommend you use list.buffer uh, in that approach uh, whenever you're generating lots of, of random numbers. Okay. So hopefully you found this video useful um, and you can use it to, to generate random numbers with more confidence and flexibility. Um, again, if you like these videos, please follow me on Twitter or subscribe to the Hoosier BI YouTube channel. Thank you.